I know I spoke on Zubak possibly losing his starting job um, of the video I posted the other day. You can definitely check that out. And um, it was definitely some riff with that because, you know, a lot of people, you know, think one way about it and some others think another way. Some people think it's okay for him not to be in the starting lineup. A lot of people, some people think it's not okay for Zubak not to be in the starting lineup based upon the, you know, the feedback you guys gave me and the feedback, you know, I hear uh, on Twitter and you know, posing some questions and things like that. So I definitely understand it's like, you know, the, you know, the Clippers world is divided when it comes to that, or at least it seems that way, you know, in my estimation uh, from what the people I know and the people I deal with, you know, especially you guys. And I'm very, appreciative of all your comments by the way so with that being said it could possibly be a situation of where if he does lose a starting job it might be a situation where they're trying to actually trade Zubak I've been hearing some things lately and the one trade proposal I heard um is with the Dallas Mavericks. Now, of course, you know, a lot of trades in the off season is not happening as much as it used to in, in the past. Now it seems like, you know, major trades or big trades happen mid season, you know, at the trade deadline, you know what I'm saying? And that's, you know, more or less probably where the Clippers are trying to make their mark at simply because, you know, it's real close to the season now and teams are starting to really get going, training camps, all those things. So making trades now is not a bad idea, but it's also ideal to make a trade at mid, you know, uh, at the trade deadline within the season because you see where players are. You see, you know, you, you've been watching them for a couple of months. You know, you see where they are physically, all those type things, how they're holding up, how they're playing, what level they're playing at, and their value speaks higher, you know, at the trade deadline because they're currently playing right now they're in the off season so you don't know whether a player is hurt because you're not watching him you don't know whether he's nursing a, a injury that he hasn't told nobody or you know it's a lot of variables that comes into it when you try to recruit or should I say go after a player in the off season so I feel like this might be a situation where the Clippers might be trying to trade Zubak secretly or under the table and not really you know uh, speak on it much and I definitely think if they do trade them, it can't be worth a trade of what, you know, the Dallas Mavericks are offering. They're basically just offering picks and some guy off their bench probably that they don't even really need or don't even know, they don't even know much about them damn selves. So I just want to pass them off to a team who's willing to take them and who's dumb enough to uh, take them based upon, you know, what they feel like the player's um, outcome could be rather than, you know, what Zubac gives the Clippers currently now. Now, don't get me wrong. I've said in other day's video that Mason Plumley, you know, might start, you know, some. And I, I don't know if he would be, uh, ideally, I don't know if he would be in that starting role a lot or something like that. I just think it's a situation where Ty Lue wants to experiment a little bit because he sees that Mason Plumley has features and attributes that, you know, Zubak doesn't have. So, of course, ultimately, I think, you know, it might be a situation where Zubak still continues to be in the starting lineup. Ty Lue just might experiment and play with it a little bit. And then if, you know, for some reason, if he likes Mason Plumlee, if he feel like it's more of a fit, then he's going to go with that, I think. But um, Zubak, you know, as I said before, Zubak plays good and he plays sound and he's, you know, good, good hands around the rim and all those things. But as I said before, Zubak, in a lot of people's minds, a lot of you know NBA people's minds, he hasn't developed to the player that a lot of people think that he could have been. I'm not saying he could have been a Jokic or anything like that, but he shouldn't be far off from a Jokic because the way Jokic plays, Jokic is, is very slow, very methodical, but very effective. And I actually looked at Zubak years ago and thought the same thing. This is he, this is back when he played for the Lakers. I thought he can be, you know, he's kind of, you know, he plays at his own pace, but he, he plays methodical and he's a decent free throw shooter. Um, he'll bang in there a little bit when he need to. And only thing I need, only thing I needed him to do, or I thought he would do, was develop a little bit more skill with the. You know, with with, uh, with with his scoring as far as his footwork around the rim in regards to being more effective that way. And I'm not saying he doesn't have it in his game. It just doesn't show because maybe he doesn't get the opportunity because, you know, it's only one basketball, Kawhi and PG, and now Russell Westbrook is going to get most of that because, you know, 
the other guys. You know what I'm saying? So I understand that Zubak is not, um, you know, getting enough opportunities to score more points, as some people believe. But you got to look at it from this point. Zubak is not getting that much opportunities because he hasn't developed in the player that uh, both teams think that he should have been. He's been in L.A. all this time, whether the Clippers or the Lakers. And the Lakers, you know, whiffed on him, left him because – you know, moved on from him because they didn't see the development in the play, you know, the development they thought he could have been or the potential that they thought he could be. And he's, he's a good average or a little bit above average role player, but the, I guess the Lakers had more and higher, higher hopes for him. And the way he came out a few years ago, I had higher hopes for him too. You know, but just looking at him the way he played, I didn't know, I didn't think he'd be on the Lakers that long. You know what I'm saying? Because players like that kind of like come and go with teams, but. I had more higher expectations of him where he would be more of a dominant type player. And I know a lot of people may say he's not getting the ball that much. And grand, rightfully so, he's not. But he doesn't have that dog in him like you want him to have as a big man. You want him to be, he could be a role player as a big man, but he should be more fierce in the paint. You know, more of a, a threat. You see what I'm saying? Like, um, like to me, when I look at Jaron Jackson Jr. on the Memphis Grizzlies, he got more dog in his game to me personally from me how I see it. He's got more dog in his game than somebody like Zubak. Zubak plays more finesse, you know, good feathery touch, all those things. But when you got to win championships and when you're trying to win championships, usually big men like that they don't really help in those type situations. I mean, we can sit there and go back years ago and talk about a player like Tim Duncan. A lot of people might think he didn't have dog in him, but he did. It just didn't show because he didn't talk, and he was kind of like a seven-foot Kawhi Leonard. He didn't talk much. He didn't show no emotion, but he had dog in him. You could see it in his game. You could see the way he played at times, and you could see he worked on his craft so much to where his feathery touch around the rim was needed at times. He was able to use it, but he was also able to be forceful at times times to impose his will on the game even when he didn't have great scoring nights and that's something that Zubak should be able to do he's not a superstar nowhere near the level of a Tim Duncan no I'm not saying that but he should have nights where he imposes his 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 will on the game to where you know he is looked at as possibly the player of the game and he has at times he has he has moments like that but he doesn't he doesn't have enough moments like that and that's the reason why I say specifically and obviously, you know, front office people think the same thing. You know, his talent, you know, he, he didn't he didn't quite live up to what a lot of people thought he could have been a little bit more, a little bit more uh, dominant as a big man. You know, rather than being a finesse big man, that's kind of like, you know, up and down, whether you put him in the starting lineup or not on a championship team. And see, that's where Zubak is. He's a good guy. He's a good big man. But on a championship team, I don't know if he would be the one that would, you know, get you over the hump. He could, but I don't really see that unless uh, unless he has more dog or more abrasiveness in his game and he just doesn't have that to me and obviously the owners and you know uh the gms think the same thing about him which is the reason why his name has been floating around trades the last couple years and they gave him a contract but i mean the contract they gave him for 33 million i mean they could basically wipe that off the board that's not like a 80 million or 100 million dollar contract that's something feasible enough to trade sign and trade i mean that's that's feasible enough to get rid of a lot of teams eat 30 million dollars and go back and recoup it the next year based upon you know everything that they can accumulate through their ratings and through you know just acquiring other players and being a better team you know in in the long run so i mean that's just something kind of no team wants to eat 30 million dollars no but i mean that's a lot more feasible to come up off of than 100 200 million dollar contracts so my point is the fact that his name is swirling around in a trade possibility again with the Mavericks who don't have a damn thing to offer the Clippers, to be quite honest, um, possibly. I mean, they trade away Christian Wood, so he's on the Lakers and they don't have no other big man that's worth a damn. I know the damn Clippers are not going to trade for no Maxi Kleber or some trash player like that. So or at least I hope they don't. So, I mean, like, really, it's just a bad proposal and that all in its own. It's the reason why I'm not talking about it much. But um, don't be surprised if they try to trade Zubac at least by um, the trade deadline, because as I said before, if there's rumors about him possibly not being in the starting lineup coming off the bench, they might have other plans for him to ship him out with Marcus Morris, who 
Um, they definitely been trying to trade, I think, for a while and just haven't found the right package deal for him. But I definitely think teams will bite on their package deal, the Clippers package deal, if they offer Zubak with Marcus Morris. If they offer that, with, you know, if they offer them two players, I think, you know, a trade would have came through for the Clippers by now. Possibly even the one with James Harden would have came through or the one Malcolm Brogdon would have came through. Now, of course, that would have been an unfair kind of sort of, you know, giving away that much. But I mean, I'm pretty sure some Clipper holics would think it's just some some clipper holics would go with the fact that hey um go ahead and do it if you to get a player like james harden or a better point guard you know a more superior point guard in you know malcolm brogdon so i mean it's just just one of those situations where we have to see how it pans out but um definitely don't be surprised they trade zubak i know i wouldn't be because i thought uh, about a year or two ago that they were going to trade him because i wasn't seeing much out of his game to where he was taken to another level because you know all those times where Kawhi and pg was out how many opportunities did he have to go out there and dominate and show that he's a little bit more than just a finesse big man there's a lot of games he didn't show a damn thing it was reggie jackson it was luke Kennard. It was those type players who were showing how they they could step up in big moments. Zubak did that at times in 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 spurts he did but he didn't do it consistently enough for the Clippers because if he did I think I mean they might actually found themselves in a playoff spot possibly if he plays a little bit more to the talent that people think he could be a couple years ago rather than falling into a playing tournament or not making the playoffs or whatever the case may be or what it was at the time so people have to look at that too the moments where Kawhi and PG was out since they get injured so much why hasn't Zubak played more dominant in those moments while they weren't there and he played pretty much the same way he plays you know whether they're there or not so i mean you gotta look at those things those things are a factor but um, we'll see what happens we'll see where it goes um we'll see if zubak stays the team or not but definitely don't be surprised if he doesn't but hey leave any comments in the comment section and we'll talk about it 